Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 69th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I am so happy that you took some time to stop by to watch this award-winning YouTube series where I expose the false prophets and false teachers, those who would corrupt the Holy Word of God for their own personal gain. Wait a second. Uh, I can't remember. Did I mention that we won many awards? I think I did, but uh, nevertheless, we've won some awards here. And oh, before I forget, uh, please take a moment to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you can see that it is required and won't be able to leave until you do so. Just go ahead and click that sub button now and I thank you. Okay, well, let's take a look at our banner scripture, Ephesians 5.11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And that means to expose them. That's what we're gonna do here. Now, here at BB34 Ministries, we love Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. And that's why we wanna shine the light on these frauds, the light of Christ, so that hopefully some of those caught up in the delusion will awaken and come back to the truth of Jesus Christ and serve him biblically. All right, I'm gonna warn you, you might chuckle a little bit as you're watching some of these clips because well, these false prophets are ridiculous. And I just wanna let you know that it's okay. If you don't laugh, sometimes you might go a little bit crazy. So you're good to go. All right, so if you're ready, go ahead and grab a seat on that comfy sofa and get some crunch and munch, and let's get ready to start this thing. You ready? All right, folks, let's do it. All right, so first up today, we've got Barry, stop calling me Chris Farley, Wunch. Oh, my pretty little pet. Of course, Barry is known for his spastic convulsions, you know, his shaking while he's prophesying. He claims he's overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, and that's why that happens, but we know otherwise. Uh, that's his shtick, so shaking violently. You know, every false prophet has their own shtick, you know, something they're known for. Because God picks show people. Prophets have to be show people. And with Barry, it's convulsing. So, uh, Barry, Stating the obvious, he's a false prophet. I've featured him many times before, and he certainly is one of Canada's most popular. Today he's with, well, let's see, Dave Scarlett. Uh, Dave Scarlett, who is one of many who provide a platform for these false prophets. Dave will not be held unaccountable. And so we're going to listen to a couple of uh, clips from Chris Farley. I mean, uh, Barry Wunsch. And uh, so let's go ahead and roll that first one. Here we go. The time is at hand to release that for the release of my wealth, the gold is mine and the silver is mine. And I have wealth and resources that you know not of. And it is time for it to be released. All right, so this is something that always works. Here's Barry prophesying the wealth transfer or the wealth release. Never mind the fact that other false prophets have been falsely prophesying this for the last 40 years. Barry here says that God says, well, it's time. <laughs> Now's the time. The time's finally here, for sure, for sure. Here comes the wealth transfer. Magical money just, you know, dispersed and given to the people. And yeah. Now, sadly, this works. They always, always throw this in. And so you've always got gullible people that are just going to believe this. So there's that. All right, Barry, what else you got for us, pal? So as I was in, you know, writing out this encounter, I record it, you know, as they come, just so I don't miss anything. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Barry, tell my people it's showtime. It's showtime. You're about to see that there's nothing that is not interconnected. Do not come fly. Do not bow. Wow. So Barry here says that God says it's showtime. It's showtime. Pretty exciting, right? Now, just for clarity, the last four years of Barry giving out his prophetic dreams, his prophecies of Trump's return and Justin Trudeau's removal, prophecy after prophecy, dream after dream. Well, that wasn't showtime. No, 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 no. Now 
it's showtime. So good news, right? Uh, four years of convulsing and shaking and spazzing out meant nothing, apparently. Barry says, God says, now, now it's showtime. While he absolutely wigs out in his car, really putting his shock absorbers to the test. He then says, God says, do not comply and do not bow. Now, I can't, I can't do any justice. He did it much better. He said it much better because he put one of his convulsions in it. But, uh, folks, that part was just funny. The shaking, of course, while saying it. it's just so cringe. And so, friends, this is blasphemy. It's mockery. This man mocks our living God. Certainly, it's unbiblical. It's unholy. Nothing that this man has ever prophesied has come to pass. It's absolutely astonishing. And here he is. Just they, I guess you really look at the followers, the gullible followers who continue to listen to him, to follow him, to support him, to enable him because they prefer the fantasies to reality. But it certainly is unbiblical. There's nothing of the gospel here, it's just nonsense. So, we want to continue to expose this man in the hopes that some of these followers will finally wake up and come back to the truth of Jesus Christ continue to mark and avoid this absolute joker. And with that, we're going to move on to our next segment. All right, so next up, uh, well, it's a little bit different of a fruit clip, uh, just in the sense that it features a church and not an individual. I found this after coming across a Protestia clip. I love those guys at Protestia, shout out. But this is the first United Pentecostal Church, and boy, this is a bit of a crazy church, and that's just me being nice. Something's going on here. Something's not right. Now, I want to warn you, these clips, well, they may turn out to be a bit of an endurance challenge to you as you watch and listen, but it's important so you can see what's happening out there. As we begin this first clip, you'll see how one of the parishioners absolutely just takes over the service with an alleged prophetic word. And my goodness, prepare yourself. See if you can make it through. Let's go ahead and roll that first clip. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right, so congratulations if you made it through that clip. Yeah, uh, folks, this is not prophecy. Also, the fact that you've got a man here holding the microphone for her uh, really, well, I think indicates that the church approves of this, and it really speaks to their shame. This is shameful. This is not prophecy. Screaming like a lunatic is more akin to something the devil does. I think it's safe to say that this church let the devil in. It's not decent. It's not orderly. It's disorderly. Now, can you imagine a potential new convert wanting to come to Jesus Christ to get saved? And they walk into this church and they see this display? They're going to absolutely flee. So something is definitely going on in this church. But 
just in case you think that this is an isolated incident, this next clip is actually from the very same service. And well, check it out. You are worth following. You're worth honoring. You're worth talking about in a good way. You are worth our hand clap. You are worth our standing and honoring you because surely the anointing that is on you, you have made some decisions behind closed doors that only you and the Lord know about. And surely he is blessing you openly. You have said no to things and we have watched you choose a certain path and we have watched God bless you tremendously and we are thankful that you made a hard decision. Well, if you made it through that second clip, congratulations. You know, there certainly seems to be a demonic stronghold of anger and rage here, doesn't there? I don't think it's <laughs> I don't think it's that great of a stretch to conclude that. Also, where are the men? I'd like to know that. Uh, I wanted to run a segment on this because it needs to be exposed. Where is holiness? Where is the reverence for God? Where's the gospel? It's nowhere. This entire church needs to repent of this to allow this kind of nonsense in there. Again, this is shameful. Lunatics have taken over here, it seems. So it's it's very sad, and, and I pray for those who are caught up going to this church, as well as other churches that do this same type of thing. You know, it's time to come out of this nonsense. Put your focus back on Jesus Christ. Read your Bible. God is holy. This is absolutely terrible. Screaming women pretending to channel God. It's just so awful. So with that, a quick segment. Wanted to expose this. Um, let's move on to our next segment. All right, so next up, we've got a Friday Fruit Clips favorite, Julie Green, ladies and gentlemen. Aww. All right, now now tell us how you really feel, audience. Aww. Yeah, that's more like it. Um, Julie Green, one of the most diabolical social media false prophets in world history, as far as I'm concerned. And that's really just a testimony to the mindset of the delusional followers who think that she's a real prophet. It is one of the most astonishing things I've ever seen, how anybody can believe that this woman is a real prophet of God. But anyway, today I'm going to be uh, playing a few clips from Julie. Uh, maybe these clips aren't the most controversial things she's ever uttered. But nevertheless, we want to be consistent in exposing this very dangerous fraud. So what we're going to do is just roll two clips. We're going to roll that first one. Here we go. Pennsylvania is key for a great victory for this nation. All right, so that's it. That's the clip. Now here, Julie has God Almighty allegedly prophesying through her. And she says that God says... <laughs> that Pennsylvania is key to gain victory for this nation. Of course, she's talking about the election coming up in November. Now, this clip probably blew past most of her brainwashed followers, but here's what they didn't catch. Julie, as she continues her campaign of degradation against God, here she's turned God into a political analyst. Yeah, she has God telling the followers that, well, we've got to, We've got to win Pennsylvania in order to get Trump back in office. Now, why is this silly other than the obvious? And here's why. Julie, over the last four years, has prophesied probably hundreds of times that God said he doesn't need an election to get Trump back in. She really has. And even before that, we remember her blasphemous 2022 year where she said that God said Trump was going to be reinstated. 2022, your rightful president is being restored to power. It will come sooner than you think. She prophesied that probably a good dozen times. All of a sudden now, 
she's got God, well, analyzing the states. And so this is very telling. It's very silly, isn't it? The followers have been so utterly dumbed down by this tater tot that their brains have been just turned into Krispy Kremes, just mush. And Julie has removed anything left of common sense and critical thinking. They just believe anything this woman says, not even having a desire to catch her in the very obvious lies that she speaks. Now, I could go on for an hour just with this clip, but we've got to get to that second clip. So let's go ahead and roll that second clip, Becky. My children, your enemies have become extremely wealthy by causing great destruction against you financially. All right, so you heard what she said. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this up so you can read it. Here it is. My children, your enemies have become extremely wealthy by causing great destruction against you financially. Now, when I heard her speak these words, it just immediately jumped out because this is what you call irony to a spectacular degree. And so I want to present a bit of a truth bomb to her followers, particularly when it comes to considering things of destruction. It is, in fact, Julie Green who is doing far more destruction to her followers than any political enemies. So what if we just rearrange some of the words up here to make this make sense, but more importantly, speak truth. Take a look at this. We can read it together. God's children, because this is not a prophecy that I'm getting, uh, giving rather, but these are the followers. God's children, your prophet has become extremely wealthy by causing great destruction against you spiritually. And folks, this is the truth. And for any of the followers of Julie Green out there, please understand, Julie has become extremely wealthy by destroying your faith. She's taken you off of the path and she's put you on, well, onto a highway of fables, fantasies, lies, and doctrines of devils because she is truly a false prophet. She's a devil. So please consider what I've shown you here. Repent and come back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come back to the truth of Jesus Christ. And with that, we're going to conclude this segment. We're going to continue to mark and avoid Julie Green, stating the obvious here. But let's go ahead and move on to our next segment. All right, so next up, we've got two veterans of false prophecy. Of course, I'm speaking of Brenda and Hank Kuhneman. Hank Kuhneman, just one of the worst out there. It's pretty safe to call him the spiritual crime boss of the Midwest. All around good fellow. Joe Pesci Jr., ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and so in this video, they're tag teaming the gullible parishioners as they, well, they're, they're just putting on quite a theatrical show. They're giving out words of knowledge while they mock individuals with a circus-like performance, which includes degrading them and humiliating them. It's kind of hard to explain until you see it. So let's go ahead and roll that first clip and we'll see you on the other side. Did you, but the Lord said the seed of the righteous is going forth and it is being raised up. And I'm about to turn the chapter from dip, difficulty into the easy button. Dip, difficulty into the easy button. Oh, you go, girl. Here's Brenda. And she pretends to prophesy. She's telling this man that, well, God says he's bringing the easy button. <laughs> And why not? Everyone likes easy buttons. I like an easy button. But here's truth, folks. Jesus promised us tribulation. So we'll, we'll come to that verse in just a bit. But Brenda says, nope, not today. God's given this guy an easy button. Well, just because. So there you go. That sounds legit, right? All right, let's keep going. Watch what I'm about to do. And the Lord says there's going to be things you'll, an assignment that I'm going to give you that you will not even have to try, says God. It'll be so much me. People will ask you, what did you do to make that happen? And you'll look at them in the eye and say, I don't even know. God did it. God did it. So, yeah, so it's just blessings, blessings, blessings. So many blessings you won't even know. 
right? Now, you're going to see this pattern as we continue with this segment with the Kunamans. Nothing that they prophesy is ever bad. Nothing is fearful. It's always just good, 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 good stuff coming. And do you know why the Kunamans and other false prophets only give good words or good prophecies? Do you want to know why? It's because smooth things get you paid. It pays better. And do you think that if Brenda prophesied to this man or some of the others that, well, you better repent and stop doing those evil, sinful things, you think they'd donate money for that? I mean, the parishioners, you think they're going to donate money to get those kind of prophecies? No, they're not going to donate any money. So the Kuhneman speak smooth things because that's what's going to get them paid. Right? Well, let's keep it rolling. Come on, help me flow. Brandi corla di shiwardo ba dele to sura mangrade zo supra dele kusa la ci mandele supare no pale vuso mas. And so even now, the Lord says, I'm lifting you to a place of prominence again. All right, so here is Hank. He takes the hand of a grown man, and he begins to, what, prophecy twirl him? Is, is, is this what you call a prophecy twirl? That's a grown man, people. Twirling a grown man around like a ballerina, humiliating him, and for what? Well, apart from degrading him, it just makes no sense. Other than what I believe, and that is that Hank just wants to humiliate people, and it's just very sad. Moto preci no 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 for you have said many times again consider this lady who's being prophesied over as hank utters his nonsensical gobbledygook he then obnoxiously points at her he screams handles her head he lifts up her arm by her finger as he acts out his fake prophecy theater what, what if this was your mom or your grandma Look at that. That is so rude. Just disgusting. This man is atrocious. For there have been things that are... For even the devil has come about like a roaring lion. He's pacing, he's walking, he's working. All right, so that's about all I can take of this. Just a, a pair of atrocious grifters, Hank and Brenda Kuhneman. I can't tell you how upset this segment got me. These people are in such delusion. Look at this poor woman. You know, I don't know how others, you know, the family and friends, they're all in this church. I don't know how they can stand there and watch these people get humiliated and degraded by these hucksters, the Kunamans. Please pray for these people. Exposing them is so very important and necessary. But as for this segment, continue to mark these two con artists and avoid them. Let's take a look at this. I show these verses quite often. This is Second Peter chapter 2. It talks about false prophets and false teachers. Let's start in verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Making The Kunamans are making merchandise of these people whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, their damnation slumbereth not. Please remember this. These, these people like the Kunamans, they do not care about the flock. They don't care 
about Christians. They don't care about the lost. They only care about themselves. Atrocious grifters, those two. I wanted to bring you over to John also, chapter 16. Look what Jesus says in verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Jesus promised us tribulation in the world. We weren't promised easy buttons like what Brenda said. Now that doesn't mean that everything's going to be bad. It just means that when all of these alleged prophets, all they do is get out there and prophesy good words, good prophecies over the people. You know, red flags should go up. You should be very leery of hearing stuff like that. And also, they never prophesy anything having to do with, you know, chastisement or correction or repentance. It's just always wonderful, smooth things to whomever they're prophesying over. Well, unless, of course, it's their political enemies or Democrats. Then the death angel is dispatched. But just remember this. So, again, the Kunamans, very cruel people very cruel, very mean, they're false prophets, continue to mark and avoid them, and let's move on. Okay, everyone, rounding off the show today is none other than Captain Harris Crunchy himself, Robin Bullock, ladies and gentlemen, a.k.a. The Tombstone. Now, Robin, of course, is a notorious false prophet who became a multimillionaire by making his living lying in the name of Jesus Christ. Not kidding. Today he's on the Dr. Evil Show with Steve Schultz. There he is on the left. Robin here, well, he's here to tell us a story. And I'm sure it's a true story. It's got to be, right? And uh, he's going to tell about one of his adventures where he saved Donald Trump from Oh, good grief. I, I can't even say it. I can't make myself say it. So listen close, folks. We're going to let Robin take it from here. Go ahead and roll that clip. I was in a meeting one night, and all of a sudden, I walked up in front of this, these, uh, this guy just sitting there on the front row, and I was reading the scripture. I had my Bible up like this, and I was just reading it, and I looked up, and I said, just a minute. And when I said just a minute, all at once, the the lights in the room went really dim, <laughs> dim like that. And I looked around, something had happened, and I didn't know what had happened. And children started going to sleep in the room. They just started falling asleep. And the camera that they were using started zooming in and zooming out. And then it just really? started doing like this. And... I'm looking around, children are falling asleep. And I said, and the Lord said, now you're two hours in the future, just like that. And we started dealing with things and I went into the future and the Lord said, now you can stop this. We stopped a presidential assassination attempt on Trump. Really? Trump. Really? It's fiction. It's fiction. We made it up. And all I'm, of that. Uh, did happened. you say I'm I'm Trump? Oh, Trump, yeah. And so we stopped this this thing happening in the future. Well, when I came back, I came back and ended up and walked up in front of that same person again on the front row, and picked up my scripture again and started reading it. And we were right back in the Jeez. same time, and the children woke up. Well, you heard it, folks. Tombstone was taken to the future to stop an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Uh, I've never seen anybody lie like this guy. Absolutely, it happened. Didn't you hear him? The children were falling asleep. The cameras were going wee -oo, wee -oo. Just make that up. Come on. Besides, look at Steve. His reaction confirmed everything. His, his reaction confirmed that this was authentic and true. Absolutely. He wouldn't just pretend to believe Robin, would he? Mm -hmm. So Robin Bullock, ladies and gentlemen, when he had that prophecy way back then that, well, this was the time of the wind, I knew extraordinary things were going to happen. And so it only makes sense that God would use him 
as the agent to travel through time to stop the assassination of Donald Trump. Absolutely. We salute you, Robin Bullock. You are a time traveling superhero getting things done in the time of the wind. <laughs> Absolutely. This is amazing. Good grief. I can't take any more. Please, let's just shut this all down. All right, folks, well, that's going to do it for this 69th episode of Friday Food Clips. Thanks so much again for stopping by. As always, I want to invite you to please pray for those who are caught up in the delusion of following these false prophets and these false teachers. Also pray for the false prophets. Pray that they would shut down their fraudulent ministries. Pray that they would stop hurting the body of Christ. Pray that they would repent. Also, if you do want to partner with my ministry, you certainly can. Right down in the description, there's a couple of different ways. You could become a Patreon member. Either way, you'd be helping to continue this ministry to get the word out and to expose these frauds and win people back to the truth of Christ. So thank you for that. All right, so yeah, we're done here. Another episode in the can. My staff is waiting at the door. We're headed over to a fish fry in Milwaukee. Apparently there's been a fresh catch of walleye and boy are we excited. So that's where we're going. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the lights and set the alarm. And we are getting ready to get out of here. So before I go, there's always one important piece of advice I wanna leave with you. And that is to always remember to Stay fruity. All right, you guys, we will see you next time. God bless. Take care. Watch this. Oh. Hallelujah. For this day, I will no longer judge you by your obedience. I will judge you by your love, Robin Bullock, for it is extravagant. Receive it, Robin. I impart my life into you, the life of the living God who knows everything, has been everywhere. 
I give you the friendship of my very son. That when you need him, he will come. Because of your willingness. And your hunger will be filled. 